Molecular libraries are just big collections of molecules, and there are two kind of broad classes of these. They can be used either for screening, say to find drugs that are useful for various conditions, or they could be used for sequencing. So basically these are just preparations of the nucleic acid, so of the DNA or of the RNA that you want to actually sequence. You prepare a sequencing library where you take those nucleic acids and you actually do things like add adapters to the end of it that are going to make it so that they can be compatible with the machinery used to sequence them. Oftentimes with these sequencing libraries, you're gonna have barcodes on them. So just another short sequence that you put on the end. And these barcodes are then going to be kind of unique identifiers that are then going to tell you when you're reading the sequencing data, which cell type they came from, which sample they came from, that various sorts of things. That information can be added onto the original sequence with that barcode. And this is really useful for allowing you to do multiplexing. So basically pull a bunch of samples together and then in the data analysis part, then you separate the information from the various samples. And by doing this, you save yourself time and money. There are also cDNA libraries, so complementary DNA, where you take all of the messenger RNAs that are being made in a cell, and then you convert those into DNA and kind of put them in plasmids and stuff. And then if you want to go and say clone a instructions for making a protein, you can go to the cDNA library and get the instructions for the version that has been edited to remove the introns and things. Your other type of library, your screening library, so we can talk about compound libraries. With, in like drug pharmaceutical libraries, you have some disease, you have some condition, you have some target. You're gonna wanna test a variety of molecules to try to find initial hits that then you can optimize or medicinal chemists and things can optimize. So you might screen against these compound libraries and you might even do like fragment libraries where you test against little pieces of molecules that might not be enough on their own to be a drug, but then you can kind of figure out, okay, well this binds and this binds, well what if we connected those? And then this is where things like rational design taking into account the structure of the molecule you can also have libraries of, say, CRISPR guides for CRISPR screens or similarly siRNA guides or shRNA guides. Here you're going to have pieces of RNA that target machinery to different genes and you can have this big pool of them that then you can go and you can target different genes in different cells and see which of those genes do what. The phage display library, you put the instructions for making different proteins into different phages and then those phages are going to make those proteins and they're going to display them. So basically they're gonna put them on their surface and then you can go and screen to see what proteins will bind to a molecule of interest.